Get up to date with the latest news and check the weather for your postcode. BBC Digital Director Ralph Rivera Shiro, Yorubun Kesogia, Mira, Kun Baksro Hanyang Jushiki Baramira. Good morning. First off, I want to thank SBS for organizing this wonderful conference and inviting me to participate. It's an honor and a privilege to be here and share with you the story of. BBC's digital journey. For those of you who aren't very familiar with the BBC, it was founded in 1922 as a public service broadcaster. It started with one radio transmitter reaching a few homes in London. Today, the BBC reaches 97% of the UK via radio, TV, and online for an average of 20 hours per person per week. Globally, it's the most trusted source of news. It reaches over 285 million people weekly. In addition to news, we're well known for high-end drama, entertainment, and documentaries. Earlier this month, at the BAFTA Television Awards, the BBC won 11 awards, the most of any broadcaster. As the director of digital, I can't take any credit for those programs because the programs that we create are computer programs. I'm responsible for our online products, BBC research and development, and BBC distribution. This includes iPlayer, our over-the-top video service, our news, sport, and weather products, all of which are number one in the UK online. Overall, bbc.co.uk is the only UK-originated site in the top 10. In mobile, we're in the top three. You could probably tell by now I'm not British. If the accent didn't give me away, my lack of modesty regarding our accomplishments certainly has. I'm a native New Yorker, a lifelong New Yorker, who only came to London and the BBC five years ago. I came because the BBC is an iconic global brand, a world-class storyteller with a worthy mission to inform, educate, and entertain. As an engineer, I was also very attracted to the BBC's rich history of technological innovation. The following clip will give you a sense for what I mean. This is the British Broadcasting Company calling. The station goes on the air. Television broadcast for the first time. The first outside broadcast of the Olympic Games. The coronation service witnessed by millions. The first live round the world telecast. The Beatles. The first color television program in Europe. You can keep abreast of the latest news with CFAX, meaning CFAX. Now, computers are getting to be very, very commonplace. The BBC puts computers in schools. To stay of what the world's ever known. Today, apparently, we launched our website. Making the unmissable. Truly unmissable. We're giving you complete control of what you want to watch and when you want to watch it. It's gone! We've been bringing you the future since 1922. Makes you wonder, where next? We're next indeed. That's the question all media companies are asking themselves as they confront the digital disruption. It's a particularly important question at the BBC. The BBC is a publicly funded institution established by a royal charter that's reviewed every 10 years. The charter sets out the BBC's scope, scale, governance, and level of funding. 
As such, we have to make the case today for the next charter, which spans 2017 to 2027. Think about that for a second. Unlike commercial companies, where long-range planning is usually three to five years, at the BBC, we have to formulate a view on the world in 2027 and work backwards from there to make our case today. 2027, that's 12 years from now. A lot of unknown unknowns will certainly pop up in that time frame. Think about 12 years ago, 2003, that's when SDF was launched. In 2003, I was at AOL Time Warner. That was the biggest online player in the world. It was still a few years away from the biggest write-off in corporate history. Apple was just a few years into its recovery with the second generation iPod. The iPhone was nowhere in sight. In fact, the only phones considered smart were from BlackBerry, Nokia, Microsoft. The internet itself was in doubt. It was the dot-com bust that followed the boom. Google was pre-IPO. Netflix was still sending out DVDs through the mail. Amazon was still referring to itself as the world's biggest bookstore. YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter did not exist. I don't know of anyone in 2003 that predicted the world in 2015. So, when I think about the BBC 2027 and the media marketplace, I'm not focused on trying to predict the unpredictable. I'm focused on positioning. Oh. Positioning ourselves relative to the following things. An internet-first BBC, a BBC that engages with the audience, formerly known as the uh, uh, engaging people, formerly known as the audience, and BBC as a platform. Uh, first off, internet, uh, an internet-first BBC. When I say that, it's an aspiration, not a reality. The reality is that we're TV first, broadcast first, radio first. We, like most other broadcasters, use the internet primarily as a means of distribution, distributing the programs that we've already created for TV and radio. We're not yet fully realizing the benefits of the internet as a medium which is social, interactive, and nonlinear. We haven't yet figured out how we tell stories in that way, how we disseminate information in that way, how do we connect and communicate in that way. For the BBC, how do we deliver our public service mission to inform, educate, and entertain using capabilities that go far beyond the capabilities that powered the radio-first or TV-first disruptions of the last century? Doing that is going to require a complete transformation of the entire media supply chain. From production to distribution to consumption. And that's going to be a long journey, a journey that we got started on a few years ago with the London 2012 Olympics. Our promise for those Olympics was never miss a moment. Digital was the, at the core of that promise. It was all the video live and on demand. It was all the data in real time for every athlete, event, and country. And it was available anytime, anywhere, on any device. It was mobile, it was social. It was recognized as the first truly digital Olympics. It, said, it, it set an entirely new baseline. Fast forward two years to 2014, 
And what was exceptional in 2012 was now business as usual as we delivered the Winter Olympics and the World Cup. A little bit later that summer, this past summer, with the Commonwealth Games, we raised the bar. Our research and development team demonstrated IP end-to-end -end broadcasting, delivering 4K from IP cameras connected to an IP studio, connected via the cloud to IP devices, mobile, tablet, and connected TVs. We also captured using 360-degree cameras and fed that into Oculus Rift. First sporting event captured and delivered through Oculus Rift to provide an immersive experience. So we went from the notion of never miss a moment to the feeling of being there. Next year, we'll be the first broadcaster to take a successful broadcast channel and convert that to online only with BBC Three, which is our channel that reaches out to youth audiences, to millennials. This will represent a reinvention of BBC Three. It will not be simply a switch from broadcast to IP transmission. This will be a pathfinder for BBC television overall. Commissioners and program makers will need to embrace doing new things in new ways. New talent, digital natives, new ideas, ideas that aren't bounded by half hour and one hour slots in an electric po uh, programming guide, new formats, new production methods, new workflow. All of these will be necessary for BBC Three to be successful as an online native. Along with that, we're working with digital natives both inside and outside the BBC to explore new uh, forms of storytelling, new formats such as interactive video. We're showcasing these new ideas, these pilots and prototypes on a site that we launched uh, earlier this year called BBC Taster. We needed a place where we could put new ideas that weren't totally crafted to perfection like we do on our television programs so that our audiences could engage early with them so that we can learn from that engagement, get the benefit of that insight, and get the benefit of that feedback. Speaking of engagement, one of my favorite phrases is engaging with the people formerly known as the audience. It's a phrase I borrowed from Jay Rosen, who's a fellow New Yorker. He's a professor of journalism at NYU. And I believe, it's my favorite phrase because I believe that the most distinguishing characteristic of the internet is the ability to connect with people as known individuals and not just anonymous audiences. Unlike print and broadcast, when you think about that outside of media, look at Uber, look at Airbnb, they've harnessed the ability of directly connecting with consumers and producers to disrupt the transportation and accommodation marketplace. In media, we have the opportunity to connect directly, to deliver personalized experiences, to transform the relationship between storytellers, story consumers, BBC as an institution, and audiences as license fee payers, and get the benefit of the data and insights that come from that direct connection to enhance our programs and services. The most recent example of us doing this is our news app. The BBC news app was just relaunched in January of this year. And we delivered um, an experience that can be tailored according to your interests. Right now, we have over 3 million people that have, that have uh, personalized their app. That's a big difference 
from when everyone was getting the same version of the app a few months before that. Before the end of the year, all the apps in our portfolio will be personalized. They'll all have sign-in, they'll be personalized, and we'll have deep analytics for them. That's a big change. Another big change is the notion of BBC as a platform, as a public service platform. When I think about disruption, I think about how profound and pervasive disruption is at a platform level. Google, platform for search. YouTube, platform for video. Amazon, platform for marketplaces. Facebook and Twitter, platforms for social media. iOS and Android, mobile platforms. They have profound, profound impact. I believe we have an opportunity to leverage our brand, our content, our capabilities, our reach, and the trust that the public has in us to create a public service platform. We have a couple of examples where we've done that already. We've done it in TV and radio in the past. We'll seek to do it in digital now. This past year, uh, we announced a program called Make It Digital, where we're galvanizing the environment that is seeking to inspire new audience, uh, new generation of audiences around digital creativity and coding. As part of that, we've brought together 50 partners, ranging from Microsoft to Google, from ARM to Cisco to Samsung, and we're delivering programs that feature coding and digital creativity across the BBC. We're also delivering a million programmable devices into the hands of every 11-year-old student in the UK starting next fall. Obviously, we'll continue to uh, deliver original content. And as I said, we, uh, we support the TV and radio industry. So all of that, all of that, is a journey that we'll be on along with every other media company that's facing the disruption. But the challenge, as always, is about culture. It won't be about strategy. It won't be about technology. It'll be about culture, because as the slide says, culture eats strategy for breakfast and lunch for technology. It's true at the BBC. I'm sure it's true for many of you as well. And so, the folks that'll make it are not the ones that are trying to use technology to recreate a digital version of yesterday. It'll be the ones that embrace conscious curiosity to explore beyond comfortable boundaries, to have the courage and the conviction in the absence of evidence to move beyond the safe past and present environment to the uncertain future. That's what we're striving to do at the BBC, and I hope that what I've shared with you today helps make it true for you as well. Thank you.